Hello, today I have an HP 15S-FQ1000NA laptop. This is a relatively new laptop, it's about a year old, and the keyboard no longer functions at all. The computer just won't detect the keyboard. Uh, the owner sent it in to HP or to the place where they bought it. It was away for weeks, I think he said four weeks. And when it came back, the, the keyboard worked again, and then it stopped subsequently. Okay, I'm going to take this apart. I did test it to ensure that the keyboard doesn't work. Uh, it works with an external keyboard. I plugged in my USB keyboard and that worked fine, but the integrated keyboard here is completely dead. So let's get going. No visible screws along the front, so there are going to be screws hidden under these two rubber strips. And with HP, I never know. Um, there's there are definitely going to be screws on either end and then on at least one of these there will probably be at least one more screw somewhere in the middle so I'm going to pull the whole strip off to avoid any surprises I'm trying to get the double-sided tape to come up to, to come up with the strip so there are three screws under this one, and three screws under this one. These two are bigger, the two that go through the hinges. Okay. So now I do use a metal tool, but it's very thin, and I don't use it to pry a lot. It, I'm just I'm releasing the clip. So I go in to here and pull down and the bottom case releases from the top case. It just pops open and you can tell that that's the way it's supposed to be. I'm not prying at all. And then when I can, I get a plastic tool in there, which is not causing any damage at all. My point is, I feel like this case was opened by somebody who was not careful and didn't really care about leaving small amounts of cosmetic damage to the computer. So far, I'm not impressed. You know, they sent it to the manufacturer to fix the defect, and the defect returned. I think he said days after the warranty expired, so I don't know what they did. He said it didn't seem like they replaced any parts, but he wasn't sure. So now I've got the three sides released. I'm going to flip this over. And on this computer, the, the bottom case is going to come up separately from the rest of it. So I would like to get some of this back released gently, if I can. There we go. So I can see the clips in here. Okay, well none of the clips are broken. That's good. And the part that I thought was a crack wasn't. It's I think it, it's from the injection molding process. It's an artifact. I think well maybe it is a crack. That or it's a knit line where when the when the plastic flowed into the injection mold, that's where two bits met. So, the first thing that jumps out at me is the ribbon cables. The two ribbon cables have creases in them. And so if I look over at the keyboard cable, I can see that it's, it doesn't line up correctly. I'm going to take this battery out to further investigate. This keyboard cable is at a awkward angle. It plugs into the motherboard at, I don't know what that is, a 40 degree angle or something. And so they expect it to be folded over. So when the keyboard was new, it would have come like this. And then it, they have little dotted markings on there to show the builder where to fold that so that it comes in at the right angle. And if it's a tiny bit off, it puts some strain on, on this cable. And I think maybe that's what the issue is. 
the owner was saying he was disappointed by the build quality on this. And I can see what he means. It's quite flimsy. Pushing here, I'm pushing on the back of the keyboard. I don't know. So I can see some kinks in this cable. So there's a kink here. And also up here. And that's not good. These cables are fragile. And that looks like a data line that's been severed intentionally, like like that wasn't meant to make a connection, I think. Oh no, that's just writing on top of it. So if I look through it, so where was that kink? Yeah, no, that looks fine. Those, as far as I can tell, look okay. I don't know. Let's plug it in. I'm, I'm just not impressed with what I see here. Because I really would have liked this cable to be, I don't know, a tiny bit longer. Or folded slightly differently. So that it can lay flat and straight here. This is just not, it's not right. It feels very strange. So I'm going to try this without the battery because the battery was pushing down on this cable. So I'm going to try it with just the AC power or the, the, the DC power plugged in. <clears throat> what have we got? No display. Oh no, there's a display. CMOS battery, that's fine. And the keyboard's working. All right. Every key seems to be working. Well, I guess that's good news. The keyboard works fine. Um, Let's see if we can keep it working. So I think the issue is with this cable. How bizarre. Keyboard is still working. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop here because I think the customer will be happy with this repair. I'm not going to charge much for this because this is probably going to be one that will come back. And we'll just decide maybe this will buy us time. to find uh, an inexpensive replacement keyboard, you know, top case with keyboard, brand new. I think that would be the best solution is to get a brand new top case with keyboard and just be very careful about how, how I fold that cable when I'm installing it. Got a quick test. When I stick these in, I like to line up the end first, both ends, because they tend to stretch when you take them off. And so I put the ends in first and then kind of just let them rest down. And that fills that void quite nicely. I'm just going to let this recover from that stretching action of taking it off of there. 
So now I'll butt this against the end. And then I'll butt this against the end. Mm, if I can. Just want to make sure that it's going to lay in that channel nicely. Still working. So that's it. Thanks for watching.